are back. So we are going to continue with integration itself. Let's start. Okay. So there are uh, standard formulae set that we discussed. Few uh, special formulae. We can discuss that. Now I'll tell you, take you, take you to. Let me see. Yes, this is going to be fine. Let me take you to rules again, like the way we studied in derivatives. So first rule: if you are integrating something and there is constant inside and x there, or I should write f of x. Anyways, uh, once again, we can write it as f of x. So I have a constant multiplied to a function. Then that constant can be kept outside. Quite a normal thing. Everybody must be aware. <coughs> Okay, so constant term can be taken outside. You know that it can be done for limits, derivative, integration, and everything. So this k comes outside. What next? If you are finding, now this is important. If I say integration of f of x, integration of f of x is g of x, then integration of f of a x plus b. Will be nothing but g of a x plus b divided by a, where a is nothing but the coefficient of x. Now this is something which you will say, "Yeah, hey, this is a little difficult," but it's quite easy. What I mean to say from this is, for example, if somebody says, "Can you find integration of x raised to four?" Yes, well, I can do that. Integration of x raised to four is what? X raised to five divided by five. By that simple standard formula, integration of x raised to n. It is x raised to n plus one upon n plus one, right? But in place of x, if suppose I give you any linear combination, I hope you are aware. We have seen it in our previous uh, session that a x plus b. That kind of a term is there. So I'll take an example. Suppose it is two x plus three raised to four. Then its integration will be written as you are going to consider this as x only, but this has to be a linear combination only. X square here is not allowed. Sin x not allowed. Only it has to be a x plus b format. Then I can write it as two x plus three raised to five upon five. But we have to divide by one more coefficient. See, dividing means multiplying in denominator, right? It's one and the same thing. So what do we divide? We divide by the coefficient of x. So what is coefficient of x? It is two, right? You can see it from here. So I'll have to divide by two. Clear? So this concept, please keep this in mind. Uh, if you want, I'll take one more example. Okay. Suppose if somebody says integration of uh, sine three x. So what will be integration of sine three x? See what is integration of sine x? It is nothing but cos x, but co that means minus. So it's going to be minus cos 3x, but I have to divide by 3. Remember, <coughs> the concept says if you have a linear combination of x, that means a x plus b. Here I have only a x. B term is missing. That's fine. B is zero. You can consider it like this. So if this linear combination is there, then in my answer I just have to divide. Coefficient of x. So what is coefficient of x over here? It is nothing but three. So I have to divide by three. Clear? So that's the concept that you need to remember. Okay. One more thing. I'm not writing plus c over here. I'm very sure you are aware that if you take indefinite integration, we always write plus c. I'm avoiding that because you are aware of this. Okay. So this concept, this rule, you need to be aware of. Third, integration of u plus v. Suppose there are two functions, then like. Derivative integration can also be separated, so you can take integration of u first, and then integration of v. And if I have any constant term over there, it can be taken outside. Clear? What if I have u minus v? Well, no problem at all. I'll have minus over here. So it doesn't matter whether we have plus or minus integration. If inside that integration I have multiple terms, I can just take integrations one by one. But the arithmetic sign has to be plus or minus. If two terms are multiplied, then this rule cannot be followed. That means I cannot say if I have integration of u into v, I cannot say it is integration of u into integration of v. 
For that I need to apply UV rule. And this is really important. And I like this. This is seriously important for an engineering student. So I'll give you two formulae. This I'm writing 12th wala formula. So in 12th standard, what did you study? Integration of u into v is nothing but u integral v dx minus integration of bracket derivative of u and then integration of v dx. This is the formula that 11th 12th standard student studies or diploma to degree, diploma students study in their diploma curriculum academics. Now this formula, if you apply in engineering, is going to be troublesome because this formula can give you multiple number of steps which will have uh, requirement of solutions further. So in engineering, what we do is we apply a shortcut formula. And what is that short shortcut formula? It is this. Integral, I'll write the whole formula again. Integration of uv is nothing but u as it is, u as it is, Integration of v, integration I'm writing as suffix. Okay, so if I write v1, it means integration of v1 time. If I write v2, it means integration of v1. That means integration of v twice. Okay, derivative I'm going to represent it, uh, represent as dash. Okay, dash. So u as it is v integration minus derivative of u. Then integration of v again. That means it is going to be v2. Then plus Derivative of u dash, that means u double dash. Integration of v2, v3. Minus, again derivative of u, again integration of v. And you have to keep on doing this. And till what time it is going to go? I don't know. It might go up till infinity. It depends on the situation. I'll explain you with example so you'll understand it properly. So in integration, we are going to use this formula which says, u into v is there, so keep u as it is, integration of v minus derivative of u, integration of v, derivative of u, integration of v. So you have to keep on differentiating u and keep on integrating v with alternate plus minus. Now I'll take an example in which I'll be solving example uh, first with this formula and then with this formula. You can easily understand and make out why this is something that we are uh, going to use in engineering, not this one. So I'll take an example. Uh, suppose if somebody says find integration of x square into e raised to x dx. Okay, x square into e raised to x dx, I have to integrate this. So let me solve it first by 12th standard concept. Okay, so according to 12th standard ka formula, I have to apply this formula. Achha, one more thing that I forgot to tell you. In integration, order is also important. Order is important means what? When you are integrating, two terms are multiplied. Keep this in mind. Two terms are multiplied, then we have to decide which one is u and which one is v. That means which term I should be considering as first term and which one is second term. There is a rule for it. In derivative, we don't have such rule. Okay. In derivative, if I have x into sin x, I can also consider it as sin x into x. It doesn't really matter which one I am going to consider as u, which one I am going to consider as v. But in integration, order is important. And order is decided by this rule, i lat. You can also write it as layat, i lat. This is the rule. Now rule says that the first term has to follow the sequence. Or first term means basically terms should follow the sequence. First, we can cons we should consider i. i means what? Inverse trigonometric function. What do we mean by inverse trigonometric function? Sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, and so on. L, logarithmic function, log x. A, algebraic function, that means what? x, x squared, x cube, y, y squared, y cube, t, t squared, all that. T, trigonometric sine, cos tan, cos x, x cot. E, exponential, means e raised to x, 2 raised to x, a raised to x, 3 raised to x, and so on. Okay, so now if I consider this question, I can see the terms that we consider is x square and e raised to x. Now clearly you can see that x square is nothing but an algebraic term, isn't it? And what is e raised to x? It is exponential term. Now out of a and e, which comes first? a comes first in our sequence. So I'm going to consider this as u and this as
Okay, so by 12th standard concept, this is going to be u into v. So u as it is, that means x square as it is, into integration of v minus a bigger integration, then a bracket, and then I'm going to differentiate u. See, this is what? Derivative of u with respect to x. So what is u? x square. What is its derivative? 2x. Integration v dx. What is v? e raised to x. dx bracket closed, one more dx. Now I can simplify. This is e uh, x square. e raised to x integration is what? e raised to x. So this part I'm done with. Minus. Now this 2 is constant, can be kept outside. So 2 outside. Integration of what am I left with? See, I'm left with x. And again, I have integration of x. What is integration of x? Uh, e raised to x? It is e raised to x. This integration is done, so I'm not writing dx. But this dx I have to write. Now, okay, so just look at this. Are we done with the integration? No. We can see that still we have an integration to be solved. So this is what I was telling you over here. That in engineering, we are not going to apply this formula. We will apply in few situations. <clears throat> but mostly we are going to apply this formula because it is going to be easier. How? I will tell you later. So let's simplify this again. This is x squared e raised to x minus 2 times. Now again I will apply u into v rule. By the same order I can see that this is u and this is v because of this order. Now apply the formula again. So u as it is integration of v minus big integration then you have to write derivative of u. What is u? x. What is derivative of x? It is 1. No need to write. Integration of v. Integration of v, that also I'll write directly. v is e raised to x, right? So what is integration of e raised to x? e raised to x. Still my integration is not done. So finally I can say, yes, I'm almost done. And I have my answer as x, e raised to x integration is e raised to x minus this e raised to x answer is going to be there is some issue I guess. U as it is, integration of V minus derivative of U into integration of V. Yes, perfect. Fine, fine, fine. Alright. <clears throat> okay, now just open the bracket. This is x square, e raised to x minus, I'll open the bracket, 2 will go inside, so 2x, e raised to x, minus, minus, plus, it is going to be 2, e raised to x. So this is my answer. Now just count the number of steps there is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In 5 steps I got the answer if I solve by this formula. Please understand I am not saying that this formula you have to forget now. This is important. We will need. I will explain you how and when. Uh, we will need. But in engineering we are not going to use that often. Okay. So now engineering method I will use. Oh it's egg. E n double g, sorry. So if my integration I consider as x square e raised to x, engineering formula will tell you to solve it like this. First decide which one is u and which one is v. So I can clearly see from this order again. The question is same in fact. So this is u, this is v. Now according to engineering formula, what we have to do? We have to copy u as it is. So I'll write u as it is. And then v1 stands for what? It's nothing but integration of v. One time. So v is what? e raised to x. So let's integrate. e raised to x integration is e raised to x. You have to continue with positive negative sign. Okay? That means alternate plus minus. So this was plus, then minus. Then it says differentiate u, integrate v. Fair. Differentiate u, integrate v. Clear? You have to keep on doing that. So let's do that over here. x square. What is derivative of x square? 2x. Then integrate v. What is integration of e raised to x? e raised to x. Then plus derivative of 2x, 2. Integration of e raised to x, e raised to x. Then derivative of 2 is 0. That means you will stop here. Are you all understanding? This is so easy. Now you must be wondering over here in this formula, oh no, 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 this formula is quite lengthy. It is going up till infinity. No, not at all. This formula will basically take you to a position or basically a destination where the derivative of this term is going to be 0. That means your answer will truncate somewhere. It will end somewhere and you have to stop there. 
Now you just compare this answer with this answer. Don't you think it is exactly same? What the difference is only that I have used uh, what we say brackets. That's it. See, if I remove brackets, x square e raised to x minus two uh, x e raised to x, then this is plus two e raised to x. Same. And how many steps did I need for this? Just one step. This is just a step in which I removed bracket. So forget this. I got answer in just one step. Not so many steps were required. So that's why in engineering we are going to use this formula, not this one. Now you must be thinking, okay, fine, let's forget this. Even if sir is saying, let's forget this. This seems much better. No, I'll give you an example. And in fact, I'll write it here only. Yeah, I can. Yes. Or, or I'll do it in the next slide. That will be much better. All right. Okay. Fine. So I'll just clean this up, and we'll meet again.